All right, hello everybody. Welcome back once again. College football 2017 predictions. This is week number six already. Coming off of a pretty rough week for the picks. Not overall. We were 5-2 and two overall last week. Straight up, who would win? But I hope you weren't taking my advice when it came to placing bets on the spread. Probably should have just stuck to the money line because we were 1-6 against the spread last week. Which is awful. Anyway, 5-2 and two overall straight up puts us to 35-15 and 15 overall on the season. 1-6 against the spread drops us below 500 to 25-27 and 27 against the spread so far on the season. So of course, let's just get into the games from last week. Talk about them a little bit. The first game was one of three games, Auburn, Mississippi State, Clemson, Virginia Tech, USC and Washington State, three top twenty-five match, three top twenty-five matchups. I said at least one of these teams were going down. I didn't pick any of them to go down last week, so I was scared and I didn't know who it was going to be. But I told you I would bet almost everything that at least one of those teams loses, and I said there's a pretty darn good chance that it's USC. That said, I did pick them to win, and I did pick them to cover the three and a half point spread, just because I thought it was a small number. But no, Washington State gets the win over USC on Friday night. And USC, who's looked shaky in a lot of their games, came out and looked shaky again. And Washington State gets a signature win. They've been in these situations before where you think they're, you know, a good team. They're turning the corner, but then they usually have a letdown. That's what I was expecting in this one. Not surprised to see them win, but I just didn't expect it, but... Hats off to them. They pull it off. It was just a well-played game by them. They were 8 for 18 on third down compared to USC's 2 for 11. They outgained USC 462 to 327. Had almost 11 minutes of time of possession over them. USC turns it over twice. Once, uh, one on an interception, one on a fumble. Washington State also turned it over. But other than that, Washington State just played a nice game. Luke Falk was 34 for 51. 340 yards, two touchdowns. Sam Darnold, not good. 15 for 29, 164, no touchdowns and an interception. So, I mean, yeah, we got the pick wrong and we got the spread wrong. Hats off to Washington State. Hopefully they can keep it together and keep going because uh, I like watching them play. Then the next game was Vanderbilt going on the road to take on Florida. SEC is awful once again. What happened last week? Something happened last week. Oh, yeah, LSU lost at home to Troy. Yeah. Remember that LSU team that was supposed to be pretty good? Then they got destroyed by Mississippi State. Who got destroyed by Auburn this week. So the SEC is obviously Alabama, Gap, Georgia, Auburn, Gap, huge Gap, everybody else. Anyway... I had Florida winning, which they did, but I did not have them covering the four, the 10 point spread just because it's Florida and it's the SEC. But they do. They win by 14. They win 38 to 24. Not a whole lot to talk about in this one. Florida's offense actually had a decent showing. They had 467 yards, no turnovers. So, hey, maybe Florida is actually getting it together and they might end up being a pretty decent team. Who knows? But obviously, the SEC East is just going to come down to them and Georgia. Quite frankly, I don't trust either team, but so far, Georgia has definitely looked better. Speaking of Georgia, that brings us to our next game. It was number seven, Georgia, going on the road to Tennessee. Another example of nobody being good in the SEC. Tennessee started off decently, is at home against Georgia. Georgia was a seven and a half point favorite. I picked Georgia to win, but I did not pick them to cover the spread just because they're on the road. I expected Tennessee to play up like they usually do, or or play down like they usually do, but in this case it would be up. And Georgia, Georgia's Georgia. They're going to lose a game that they shouldn't. That's what they do every year. So even though I picked them to win, I thought it would be close, so I didn't pick them to cover the 7.5. They win 41 to nothing. Tennessee is terrible. That's, I mean, that's... I'll br- the box score is right here. The stats are right here. That's, you can just look at them. Pause the video because I'm moving on. SEC sucks my ass. Then we had Iowa going on the road to Michigan State as a three and a half point underdog. I picked Iowa to win in my upset of the week. That didn't go very well. They lose 17 to 10. And I mean, 
this is another case of a game that's really not much to talk about. Iowa turns it over twice. Michigan State doesn't turn it over, but Michigan State only gets 300 yards of offense. I mean, neither team looked very good. Michigan State's defense looked good, but their offense wasn't able to do much of anything. They didn't score for the majority of the game. They scored their two touchdowns within their first three possessions of the game. And then it was just field position. Michigan State kept winning the field position, and Iowa's offense is absolutely terrible. Quite frankly, if Michigan State's offense was any better, this game should have at least been like 30 to 10. But Michigan State's offense just cannot put together drives for a majority of the game, and that's why you get this ugly 17 to 10 game. Don't watch this game. It sucked. Didn't really prove anything either way. I think it proves that Iowa's not very good overall in the grand scheme of things. Um, And it also proves the same thing that Michigan State's proved its first three games. Beat teams, blow them with good defense against bad offense, and don't really do much yourself on offense. And then get destroyed by the one good team you play. Anyway, moving on, back to another SEC matchup. This was number 24, Mississippi State, on the road against number 13, Auburn. Auburn was a nine-point favorite. I picked Auburn to win, didn't pick them to cover the spread, because I respected what Mississippi State did to LSU for some reason, and that obviously proved to not be a wise decision, because Auburn wins 49-10, to and uh, just another case, you know, these games, quite frankly, they sucked. Not a lot to talk about in this one. I mean, it just, you, you see it for yourself. Auburn took the lead early, and they never relinquished it, and it never looked like they would. Which brings us to the lock of the week from last week. It was number 11, Ohio State, going on the road to take on Rutgers. I told you a couple weeks ago, I don't think Rutgers is going to win a game all year besides the one they had against Morgan State. Well, they have a chance this week. I'll give them that. They're going on the road against Illinois, and this is the battle of the basement for the Big Ten. So Rutgers does have a chance to win one more game this year. Anyway. I said Ohio State would cover this 29-point spread. I said anything less than that would just be embarrassing. Ohio State goes in, they do their job, they win 56 to nothing, outgain Rutgers 628 to 209. I mean, it was just domination. They didn't actually start out the way. At the end of uh, one quarter, it was actually only seven to nothing. Rutgers actually had a chance early or late in the first quarter. They were in Ohio State's 15, I believe, down seven, and then they throw an interception. So that was pretty much it. You know, if they get a touchdown on that, who knows, maybe they keep it a little more interesting. I I still think they'd lose by like 21 at least, but yeah, uh, Ohio State got the turnover. They went down the field, they scored, and then the game was pretty much over. So we got the pick right, and we got the lock of the week right as Ohio State covers that 29-point spread. That was the only spread we got right was that massive 29-point spread. Unbelievable. Anyway, the last game on the list was number two, Clemson. Seven-point favorite going on the road to take on Virginia Tech. I had Clemson winning, which they do, but I did not have them covering that seven-point spread. I thought it'd be a one-possession game, less than a touchdown, or a touchdown at most, which would be a push. So I didn't have them covering, but they do. They win 31-17. to Actually a pretty even game offensively, but two interceptions for Virginia Tech and a fumble really made the difference in this one. But you gotta give credit to Clemson's defense. It is obviously... One of the best in the country, if not the best. So these weren't unforced turnovers. There's pressure on the quarterback. All sorts of things that really played into this. So Clemson, they prove it again. They are a national champion contender. There's no doubt about it. They go on the road against Virginia Tech at night and just win. Like I said, turnovers played a role, but Clemson didn't turn it over. So you got to give them credit for that. And these weren't unforced turnovers. So you got to give them credit for that. So Clemson wins. Like I said, we finished last week with a 5-2 and two record straight up. Who would win? Pretty good. That puts us to 35-15 and 15 on the year straight up, which is pretty good. But we went 1-6 and six against the spread last week, which is awful. That drops us down to 25-27 and 27 against the spread all season. We got our upset wrong for the third week in a row. Started off hot with Eastern Michigan over Rutgers, but since then we've got all three upsets wrong. So we're 1-3 and three for upsets of the week. Got the lock right, so we're three and two for the lock of the week. So let's get into this week's game. This is actually the lowest amount of games so far. Last week was the lowest with seven. Now this week is the lowest with six. I actually thought there'd be a good amount just thinking of some of the games off the top of my head. But once I got into it and started looking at all the matchups, just not a whole lot stuck out to me. 
So I only came up with six for this week. There's a couple of conference games in the SEC and the Big Ten, but they're, like I said, SEC is garbage, and the Big Ten ones are like, meh, teams, whatever. And then just not a whole lot interested me in all the other areas of the country. But the first game is a top 25 matchup. It is Thursday night. It's number 17, Louisville, as a four and a half point favorite going on the road to take on number 24, NC State. NC State's 4-1. and one. They've won four in a row, including that win at Florida State, who don't look very good without their quarterback. Then they beat Syracuse by eight last week. Louisville's been doing Louisville things. They've won all their games pretty convincingly, except, well, the Purdue one, but that was self-inflicted wounds, and then they lost to Clemson. What are you going to do about that? They did get destroyed, but whatever. I mean, I think it's Clemson and Alabama. They're going to destroy most people they play. So a lot of people actually like NC State in this game, and I understand why. They're at home. It is a night game, prime time. They are an underdog, but FPI, uh, Football Power Index, actually gives them a 61% chance to win this game, NC State. That's pretty crazy. Um, I think Louisville's the better team. And on the road, Lamar Jackson, I think he's going to show up. I think he's going to have a good game. He had a great game last week. He only played like a couple... I think just the first half against Murray State, you know, so obviously he's going to have a great game, but he did have a great game. And I think he'll follow it up with a good performance against NC State. I think Louisville wins on the road against NC State in the spread of three and a half. I'm just going to go ahead and and say Louisville covers because I think they win by at least four. And then we have the second top 25 matchups. This is all for this week. There's two. It's number 23, West Virginia, going on the road to take on number eight, TCU. TCU getting a lot of respect now after their big win against Oklahoma State on the road. They're coming off a bye week at home against West Virginia, who looks pretty damn good on offense, but you gave up 34 points to Kansas. That's not good. TCU's actually been pretty impressive on defense, other than the SMU game. So this game, I mean, TCU's an eight-point favorite. I'm definitely going TCU all the way at home, but I like West Virginia to keep it close. So TCU is going to win, but give me West Virginia to cover that eight-point spread. And then the next game is our upset of the week. We're going to get this one. I was actually going to do one. Actually, I'll keep that till we get to that game. Teaser there. Anyway, upset of the week. It's going to be number 13 Miami going on the road to take on Florida State. That's right, Miami's a three-point favorite on the road, but I like Florida State in this game. Florida State obviously had a rough going against Alabama, which is fair. They lose their quarterback, though, then go at home and lose a close one to NC State, who I think is a pretty decent team. Then last week, they go to Wake Forest and pull out a seven-point victory there. So it hasn't been fantastic for Florida State, but they're at home against their rival Miami. Miami's looked pretty good, but I think they're a little overrated. Sorry to say it. So I think that Miami going into Florida State isn't going to go very well. Give me Florida State to upset Miami. That's my upset of the week. Which brings us to our lock of the week. Another case of not a lot of games this week. So I just found a game that I thought the spread was kind of wonky. And I thought that this one was pretty solid. You got Minnesota going on the road to take on Purdue. I don't know why Minnesota has all the love it does. They are a three and a half point underdog in this game, but football power index gives them a 50.3% chance to win on the road. I think Minnesota's favored. Let me actually take a look at it real quick. According to football power index, Minnesota should actually win one, two, three, four more games, which would give them seven wins, which I mean, that's about what Minnesota does but they just lost at home to Maryland and Maryland who is down to their third string quarterback doesn't look good anymore they looked really good their first couple weeks but then once they lost their top two quarterbacks they got absolutely destroyed by UCF then they bounced back with a road win at Minnesota so I'm not following all the love for Minnesota, especially on the road against the Purdue team that has looked good. They hung in there with Louisville, only lost by seven. They destroyed Ohio. They went on the road and destroyed Missouri, and they were leading Michigan at the half, and now they're coming off of a bye week against Minnesota. 
I like Purdue in this one, and they are going to cover that three and a half point spread. That is my lock of the week because, as a matter of fact, Purdue wins this game by two scores at least. That's right. And then staying in the Big Ten, we got the in-state rivalry battle for the Paul Bunyan Trophy. Michigan State going on the road to take on number seven, Michigan. Michigan is a 13 and a half point favorite. This is a night game, fourth ever night game at Michigan Stadium. First ever night game between Michigan State and Michigan. Michigan State coming off that seven point win against Iowa. Michigan coming off of a bye week. They lost their starting quarterback against Purdue. Their backup, John O'Corn, comes in and looks way better than Milton Spate did all year. So maybe that's a good thing. We'll find out. But one thing we do know is Michigan State has not played a defense like Michigan. And their offense has not looked that great anyway to begin with. So quite frankly, barring turnovers, I don't know how Michigan State scores more than a touchdown. And while Michigan State's defense has been pretty good, I don't think they're going to hold Michigan to less than 17 points or anything like that. And plus, with Michigan's kicker, anytime they get inside the 35 or 40, they should be adding three points. So all that combined... Night game, yeah, it's a rivalry game. Michigan State always plays Michigan close, give or take a couple years, but usually this is a really competitive close game. But at night, Michigan's, I mean, Michigan's 4-0, or 3-0 at night during a time when they weren't a very good team playing teams that were equally talented as them. It'd be Notre Dame in 2011, Notre Dame in 2013, and Penn State in 2014 at night. And... Everybody knows Michigan State, Michigan was awful in 2014 and awful in 2013. So now a team's coming in who is, quite frankly, not close to them in talent. Not this year anyway. So Michigan should win this game. I don't buy into the fact that Michigan State's going to be that much more up than Michigan in this environment on the road at night to make up that much of the talent gap and keep this game within two touchdowns. So Michigan, 13 and a half point favorite. Give me them to win and give me them to cover. Then finally, we wrap up the week with number 11, Washington State going on the road to take on Oregon. This was actually going to be my upset of the week when I looked at it on paper. But then I realized when I looked at it that Oregon is actually a two point favorite. Yeah, you got an unranked team hosting a number 11 team and the unranked team is the favorite. So it can't be my upset of the week when the team I think is going to win is already favored to win. So not a lot of respect for Washington State here. They're number 11. They're going on the road. Oregon has looked really good besides the Arizona State loss. They are scoring kind of like they used to. Not as much, but they're scoring over 40 points a game on average. Their defense is allowing less than 30 per game, which is... Actually pretty good for Oregon standards. And it's Washington State. I mean, the reason they're not getting respect is because they don't have that history of deserving it. Like I said last week, the reason why I picked against them is because they just don't win those kind of games against top five teams. So if they go into Oregon and beat them, maybe people will start giving them respect. But I think this is just another hurdle that Washington State has to overcome to prove they are a legit Pac-12 contender. So I like Oregon at home to beat number 11 Washington State and cover the two-point spread just because that's so small. They're going to win by a field goal at least. So that's my picks for this week. Not a very long video. Not a lot of picks to go over last week and not a lot of new ones this week. I mean, it is what it is. So let's see how these ones play out. Hopefully we do better against the spread. But these ones are actually all pretty even spread-wise. So... I'm actually more concerned about head-to-head. You got Michigan 13.5 points. That's the biggest spread. And then all the other spreads this week were one-score spreads. So straight up uh, might be a little tough this week. A lot of close games that I chose, but we'll see how it plays out. And as always, in the comments below, let me know what you think of my predictions and any predictions you have for the upcoming week, whether these were it was these games or whatever game. If you want to give me your Notre Dame... North Carolina, LSU, Florida pick or prediction, you know, go ahead, go wild. I don't care. Um, I'll even reply and give you my opinion on it. 
And as always, subscribe for next week where we break down all these games and pick some more. Check out my NFL predictions if you're an NFL fan. I've been on a roll. Toot toot, own horn, I know. But off to a good start in the NFL in terms of those picks. So be sure to subscribe, and I will see you all next week. Goodbye.